bringing the ripening on just perfectly ready for autumn. Now I'm not just using the Bramley apple. I just felt that we could add another texture and another apple flavour to go with it. So I've chosen the russet apple. Now to prepare this I like to keep the apples really quite chunky like this. So simply top and bottom the apple and now we're going to peel away the skin. And now just halving through the actual apple and cutting each into about three thick wedges. The next stage is to also cut away the central core and then these pieces you can just pop into acidulated water just very briefly in there to maintain the colour. And now it's time just to cut these in half again. Now notice I'm keeping the Bramley apples separate from the russets. The quantity you're going to require, it's about a kilo of the Bramleys and about 675 grams of the russet apple. But I want to encase this totally in pastry. Now to help that along and prevent the apples from becoming too watery while they're baking, I like to pre-cook the apples. So the first thing, and the reason for this separation, is that both of them hold a different texture. The russet is going to take just that little bit longer to cook. Now I'm adding to this a good knot of butter into the pan. So that's the russets straight into the pan. And I'm just going to sit a lid on top and literally just cook those now for just a few minutes, five or six minutes absolute maximum. Not to cook them all the way through, but purely to take out some of their rawness before adding the Bramleys. There's another flavour I'm going to add to this, and it's going to have a citrus bite to it. And I'm going to actually just pop in the finely grated zest of one lemon and one orange. And they do add a nice little piquancy. So that's the zest. Let's take another look at the apples. Now that's the stage that I'm after. You can see that that has begun to just soften, just slightly around the edge, but still very firm in the centre. So in with the Bramley apples as well. Now it's at this stage we're going to add the other flavours and I'm only going to be adding 75 grams of caster sugar. If you prefer a pie that's got a slightly sweeter touch, just put that up to 100 grams. Let's sprinkle this on top as well. And as you stir in this zest, you're going to notice how it actually changes the colour of the actual fruit. When you're cooking these, it really depends on the size of the chunk of the apple as to exactly how long they're going to take. I want to get them to a sort of a nice soft stage, still with a little bite running through them. So it's just a question of keeping your eye on them every now and again, give them a very, very light stir until they're at that tender stage. Now you can see in here exactly how that Bramley now is beginning to break down amongst the russet apple. Cooking them in this way, of course, creates a little bit of sort of an apple and lemon orange syrup. And that I want to drain off, but of course it's very nice to offer with the cooked pie, just to drizzle across the top. So let's pop those into a colander and collect any of those excess juices. So there we have the cooked apples. Before putting them into the pie, they just need to cool. Now, I've made a sweet pastry and lined a mould which is about 25 centimetres by three and a half centimetres, just literally a ring that's been buttered and floured onto a buttered tray. The quantity of ingredients I've used to make this pastry is 375 grams of plain flour, just sifted, with a pinch of salt, 175 grams of butter, 75 grams of caster sugar, with one whole egg, and about 25 to 50 millilitres of milk just to loosen it. Now, once you've got that pastry, I've actually taken two-thirds of that mix once it's rested for a good 30 minutes and I've rolled it to line the pastry case, leaving me plenty here still, of course, to top the pie. Now, you'll notice as well how I've left the edges of the actual pastry hanging over the side of the mould. And there's a good reason for this. I'm going to leave it like that as it bakes. Of course, you're going to now prick the base with a fork and then line it with greaseproof paper with baking beans or, of course, rice. And you need to cook that in the oven at about 200 degrees for about 25 minutes before, of course, removing the beans and the paper and then replacing it in the oven for about another five to 10 minutes. That, of course, then will give you this nice sort of firm base as well to the actual pie. Now, once it is actually cooked, that is when you can trim away all of that excess pastry. And that will, of course, leave you with a totally even, neat finish. Another thing I want to do 
before actually popping in the apples is just to put a little thin strip of pastry on this border so when of course putting on the pie topping it won't shrink in it'll stick immediately to that other or pastry I have here just some egg wash literally just one egg beaten which I'm also now going to brush around the edge of the pastry this of course will help stick this actual strip to the cooked pastry itself The next stage is also to brush the inside of the pastry with the egg wash. I'm going to take just a tablespoon of semolina. If you just dust that, that will help absorb any of the excess liquor that the apples are going to release, consequently helping maintain a nice crisp base to your pie. Here we have cooked apples that have cooled and now we're going to pack them into the pie. So you can see now the apple pie is really beginning to take shape. All it needs now is just to be covered. And once again, just that little touch of egg wash on top of the raw pastry strip. So let's roll out the remainder of the pastry and we just want a nice disc to sit on top. Now roll the pastry back across your rolling pin and then literally just release like that and we're just going to lightly push around the edge pressing the two raw pastries together just cut the pastry against the actual mold and as you can see this is going to give you quite a nice neat little finish I'm just pushing in that lid just a millimeter or two to release it from the actual ring itself. Something else I want to do before baking this is just make a little cut. This will of course help release any of the steam that's going to be created from the apples inside as they're warming through. Now all we're going to do now is literally egg wash the pie once again and then pop it into the oven on absolute maximum temperature and that will take between 25 and 30 minutes to leave you with a nice golden brown top. Now this particular pie here has had a good sort of 15 to 20 minutes resting time and it needs that just to relax the apples inside and I really do feel that apple pies eat at their best when they're really just warm or even cold. And You can hear the crispness of that pastry that's been maintained. We've got the nice chunks of apple still sitting in. You notice as well the lovely soft moisture and that lovely puree that's almost holding them all together. Just a little drizzle of the saved apple syrup. So there we have Bramley Russet Apple Pie.